Have you ever wondered why sometimes you make decisions without even thinking about it? It's as if your mind is on autopilot, smoothly navigating through a sea of choices with an uncanny sense of direction. This, dear listeners, is what we call instinctive decision-making. It's the silent whisper of your subconscious mind, the unexplained pull towards one choice over another. Now, before we continue, we'd like to remind you to comment, like, and subscribe if you're finding this content interesting and want to join on this journey of exploration. Now back to our discussion. Contrast this with deliberative decision-making. Here, you consciously weigh the pros and cons, analyze the situation, and then make an informed choice. Like your mind is a seasoned chess player, carefully planning its moves. Understanding these two forms of decision-making is like unlocking door to the vast and intricate world of psychology. It helps us comprehend why we act the way we do, why we make certain choices, and what influences these choices. So, are you ready to embark on this intriguing journey? Let's dive into the mysterious world of instinctive decisions and explore its secrets. Consider the case of the world-renowned chess master Magnus Carlsen. A prodigious talent, Carlsen's reputation for making lightning-fast decisions in high-pressure situations is legendary in the chess world. But what's fascinating is that these decisions are often instinctive, not deliberative. Let's delve a little deeper. In the throes of a chess match, Carlsen doesn't have the luxury of time to meticulously calculate his every move. Instead, he relies heavily on his instincts, honed over countless hours of practice and experience. His intuition guides him, whispering the next move just when he needs it. This isn't to say that Carlsen's decisions are arbitrary or impulsive. They are the result of years of rigorous training and a deep understanding of the game. His instincts are finely tuned to recognize patterns, anticipate his opponent's moves, and swiftly respond with a counter-strategy. In a game as complex and unpredictable as chess, where there are more possible positions than there are atoms in the observable universe, such instinctive decision-making is invaluable. It's like having a secret weapon, a sixth sense that cuts through the noise and zeroes in on the optimal move. Moreover, Carlsen's instinctive decisions often trump those of his opponents who rely solely on deliberate, logical thinking. He's able to seize opportunities that others might miss, capitalizing on subtle shifts in the game's dynamics. His instincts, in essence, give him a competitive edge, enabling him to outmaneuver and outwit his opponents. So what can we learn from Magnus Carlsen? Well, his approach underscores the power of instinctive decision-making. It shows us that instincts, far from being rash or reckless, can be a potent tool in our decision-making arsenal, particularly in high-pressure, time-sensitive situations. But here's the rub. While Carlsen's instincts serve him well on the chessboard, one might wonder if they could lead him astray in other areas of life. After all, instincts aren't infallible. They can sometimes misfire, leading us down perilous paths. So instinctive decisions can lead to success, but can they also lead to danger? Let's revisit the ill-fated voyage of the Titanic. A grand ship, they called her, the unsinkable, a marvel of technology in her time. Yet, as we all know, her maiden voyage would also be her last. The key player in this tragedy? The captain's instinctive decision to continue at full speed despite iceberg warnings, Captain Edward J. Smith, a seasoned seafarer, held fast to his instincts. He had navigated icy waters before. His confidence, bolstered by the ship's advanced features, led him to believe that the Titanic could outrun any dangers that lurked in the Atlantic's frigid depths. His instinct told him to press on, to maintain the speed, to deliver on the promise of a swift transatlantic journey. Instinctive decisions are often rooted in past experiences, and Captain Smith had plenty. But in this instance, his instincts were tragically off-mark. The iceberg, an unmovable mass of frozen water, was not something to be outrun. It was a reality to be acknowledged and respected. The captain's instinctive decision, guided by overconfidence and the pressure of expectations, steered the Titanic into disaster. The iceberg tore through the ship's hull, and the unsinkable Titanic began her descent into the icy abyss. Over 1,500 lives were lost in the freezing Atlantic waters, 
a chilling reminder of the severe consequences of instinctive decisions gone awry. This tale is not to discredit the value of instinctive decision-making. On the contrary, it serves as a reminder that instincts, though powerful, are not infallible. They should not be the sole guiding force, especially when the stakes are high and the risks are real. Instinctive decisions are as much a part of our cognitive process as deliberate ones. They can lead to spectacular successes, but as the Titanic's tale reminds us, they can also result in catastrophic failures. Clearly, instinctive decisions can have severe consequences. But as we'll explore in the next segment, understanding the science behind these decisions can help us harness their power more responsibly and effectively. But what exactly happens in our brains when we make these instinctive decisions? The human brain, a marvel of nature, is a complex network of billions of neurons, with each one capable of making thousands of connections. When faced with a decision, these connections fire up, sending signals across various parts of the brain. And one of the key players in this process is the amygdala, an almond-shaped structure located deep within the brain. The amygdala is like a vigilant sentinel, always on the lookout for potential threats. When we stumble upon a situation that demands an immediate response, the amygdala jumps into action, triggering a cascade of physiological responses. Our heart rate increases, our pupils dilate, and adrenaline floods our system. This is the body's fight-or-flight response, preparing us for action. But it's not just the amygdala that's involved. The prefrontal cortex, the brain's executive function center, also plays a crucial role. It's responsible for higher-order thinking, such as reasoning and decision-making. However, the prefrontal cortex takes its sweet time. It gathers information, weighs the pros and cons, and then makes a decision. So when we're faced with a split-second decision, the amygdala often overrules the prefrontal cortex. It's faster, but not always accurate. It's like a hasty friend who jumps to conclusions without getting the full story. On the other hand, the prefrontal cortex is the cautious friend, who takes their time to assess the situation before making a decision. Now, you might be wondering, why do we have such a system in place? Well, in the wild, speed often trumps accuracy. It's better to mistakenly perceive a stick as a snake and live than to mistakenly perceive a snake as a stick and, well, not live. So our brains are wired for instinctive decisions. We have an inbuilt system that prioritizes speed over accuracy when the stakes are high. But the question remains, can we control these instinctive decisions? Can we train our brains to be more accurate even in the heat of the moment? Can we strike a balance between the hasty amygdala and the cautious prefrontal cortex? Ever heard of mindfulness? It might be the key to controlling our instinctive decisions. Mindfulness, often associated with meditation and yoga, is much more than a wellness buzzword. It's a conscious state of being fully present, aware of where we are and what we're doing, without being overly reactive or overwhelmed by what's happening around us. Imagine standing at the edge of a loud, bustling and chaotic market. There's an onslaught of sounds, smells and sights, a sensory overload. But amidst this chaos, you remain grounded, observing each detail without getting swept away. That's mindfulness, a serene island in the sea of chaos. But how does this relate to instinctive decision-making? Well, mindfulness allows us to step back and observe our thoughts and feelings as they occur. This gives us the unique ability to identify when we're making an instinctive decision and when we're making a deliberative one. So, instead of immediately reacting to a situation based on our gut feelings, we can pause, observe our instincts, and then choose whether to follow them or take a more deliberative approach. It's like having a conversation with our instincts, acknowledging their presence, but not always letting them take the driver's seat. Now, mindfulness isn't a magic wand that can instantly transform our decision-making process. It takes practice, patience, and persistence. It's like learning a new language. You gradually become more fluent over time. If we consistently practice mindfulness, we can begin to notice patterns in our instinctive reactions. This awareness can help us understand when our instincts serve us well and when they lead us astray. And with this understanding, we can make more informed, deliberate decisions when necessary. Remember, instinctive decisions aren't inherently bad. 
They're just one part of our complex decision-making toolkit, but by practicing mindfulness, we can gain more control over when and how we use this tool. Mindfulness is a powerful tool, but it's not the only way to control our instinctive decisions. What if I told you that our experiences play a significant role in shaping our instinctive decisions? Let's delve into this fascinating concept. Our life is a mosaic of experiences, each tile adding color and depth to our perception of the world. These experiences, whether we are aware of it or not, have a profound influence on our instinctive decision-making process. Think about it, if you've ever been burned by a hot stove, you instinctively pull your hand away the next time you're near one, even if it's not turned on. That's your past experience shaping your decision to avoid potential harm. Or consider a more complex scenario. Let's say you're a seasoned investor. Over the years, you've learned to trust your gut when it comes to buying or selling stocks. Your instinct isn't some magical sixth sense. Rather, it's the culmination of your past experiences in the stock market. The successes, failures and everything in between. But it's not always about self-protection or financial gain. Experience influences our decisions in more subtle ways too. Ever found yourself gravitating towards a certain type of book in a library or a particular genre of music? That's your past experiences guiding your present preferences. So, what's happening here? Our brains are constantly learning from our experiences. They're creating patterns, making connections and forming a database of sorts. When faced with a decision, our brains tap into this database, pulling out relevant information to guide our instinctive response. It's a beautifully efficient system honed over millennia of evolution. But here's the catch. As powerful as this system is, it's not infallible. Our experiences can sometimes lead us astray, resulting in poor instinctive decisions. Remember that hot stove? What if it was actually cold and you missed out on baking a delicious pie out of fear? This brings us to a vital question. Our experiences shape our instincts, but is there a way to improve our instinctive decision-making skills? Yes, there is a way to improve our instinctive decision-making skills, and it involves challenging our instincts. This might seem counterintuitive, but bear with me. Let's consider our initial instincts as the first draft of a novel. It's got the basic elements, but it needs refining to become a masterpiece. Similarly, our initial instincts can be the starting point, but they need to be challenged, questioned and fine-tuned to become the best decisions. One way to challenge our instincts is by seeking feedback. This doesn't mean asking everyone what they think about your every decision but rather engaging in thoughtful conversations with people whose opinions you respect. They might provide a different perspective or ask questions that make you reconsider your initial instinct. Remember, the goal here isn't to let others decide for you, but to challenge your own thinking and expand your perspectives. Another method is practicing mindfulness. Many of us rush through life always thinking about the next thing on our to-do list, but when we slow down and pay attention to the present moment, we can notice subtle cues that our instinctive mind picks up on. Mindfulness can help us get in tune with our instincts and make them more reliable. Moreover, it's important to understand that improving instinctive decision-making doesn't happen overnight. It's a process that requires practice and patience. Just like a musician doesn't become a virtuoso after one practice session, we can't expect to become masters of instinctive decision-making immediately but with time and consistent effort we can improve. And importantly, don't be too hard on yourself if you make a wrong decision. It's part of the learning process. Each mistake is an opportunity to learn and grow. With every decision you make, you get better at understanding your instincts and improving your decision-making skills. So, instinctive decision-making is a complex process, but with practice, we can learn to make better instinctive decisions. Let's recap what we've learned about instinctive decision-making. We began our journey by posing a question of decision, whether to rely on our gut instinct or to deliberate over every choice we make. We understood that there's no clear-cut answer, as both have their unique strengths and weaknesses. We then dived into the world of a chess master where we saw how instinctive decisions, honed over thousands of hours of practice, can outsmart even the most sophisticated artificial intelligence. This example illustrated the power of instinct, shaped by experience and repetition. From the highs of a chess match, we descended into the tragic tale of the Titanic. 
Here we saw how instinctive decisions when influenced by fear or stress can lead to catastrophic outcomes. It served as a stark reminder that not all instincts serve our best interests. We then delved into the scientific realm, exploring the fascinating workings of our brain when making instinctive decisions. We discovered how our brain uses patterns and shortcuts known as heuristics to make rapid, instinctive decisions. However, these shortcuts can sometimes lead us astray, resulting in cognitive biases. Our journey then led us to the power of mindfulness. We learned that by being present and aware, we can better recognize and control our instinctive reactions, leading to more deliberate and informed decisions. We also explored the role of experience in shaping our instincts. Just as a seasoned chef instinctively knows when a dish is perfectly seasoned, our experiences shape our instincts, making them a powerful tool in our decision-making arsenal. Finally, we discussed how we can improve our instinctive decision-making by cultivating mindfulness, learning from our experiences and understanding our cognitive biases, we can make our instinctive decisions more reliable and effective. Remember, every decision you make, instinctive or deliberative, shapes your life. Choose wisely.